Straight ahead on CCX News, rallying to extend their legal status in the U.S. What local Liberians are saying as another deadline gets closer. Plus, it's a game and a business that puts you up against a quiz show buzzer. But first, they're strong, courageous, and well-trained. But sometimes what first responders experience can have an impact. The most horrific things you can imagine. Um, we see it, we deal with it. CCX News starts right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. Firefighters are known as heroes for running into burning buildings and saving lives. But throughout the course of a firefighter's career, they can see and experience situations that take a toll on their mental health. As Delane Cleveland reports, a former firefighter from Plymouth is now on a mission to encourage others in the profession to get the help they need. A hero is defined as one who shows great courage. And few careers exemplify that more than firefighting. I just fell in love with it, and that was my goal from being a little kid uh, till I became an adult and finally became a fireman. Firefighting was in Brian Cristofano's blood. And Monday morning in Brooklyn Center, he had the opportunity to speak to a group of people in the profession. My uncle told me if I wanted to be a full-time firefighter, to become a paramedic. For 13 years, the Plymouth resident got to live out his dream as a firefighter and paramedic with several Minnesota fire departments. It was a dream come true. I wanted to get all the fires, I wanted to get all the medicals, and I became an adrenaline junkie. It's a job that requires strength and tenacity, but what's often forgotten... The most horrific things you can imagine. We see it, we deal with it. ...is that first responders encounter people on their worst days. I found myself having panic attacks on the job, and... Uh, and could no longer do it. And he says they're not trained on how to process it. Yeah, it drove me to the point of almost suicide. Brian eventually retired in 2016 after being diagnosed with PTSD. Put the gun down, went back to my truck, and I called my therapist. And uh... Now he's on a mission to talk to other first responders about the importance of getting help. I feel it's extremely important for everyone to hear the message of what Brian has to say. Gary Hendrickson is Brooklyn Center's deputy fire chief. He asked Brian to hold this seminar Monday morning. As a leader within the organization, we need to encourage our firefighters to basically understand that this could happen to you, and if it does, here's some resources for you to deal with at hand. Brian says he's getting the help he needs, but during his talks, it's evident that there are issues he still deals with to this day. There's five line of duty deaths from guys I knew, and three of them were suicides. The hope is that by getting his story out in the open, Others in the profession won't suffer the same fate. You know, it might help, it might save their life, it might save their, their family. Um, that's what I hope. In Brooklyn Center, Delaney Cleveland, CCX News. Christofano is also helping a state lawmaker with a bill that would make it easier for first responders who are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder to receive workers' compensation. The Northwest Metro area has one of the largest Liberian populations in the U.S. And they are increasingly worried that a temporary immigration status won't be extended again. And as Eric Nelson reports, some took that message to the state capitol. On a cold and blustery March day at the Capitol, we got to come and show some love. Several hundred Liberians passionately appealed to Minnesota politicians in a solidarity rally. Please talk to the president and, you know, to help our people. They want state representatives and senators in D.C. to convince President Donald Trump that DED is a worthy cause. If DED is not extended, uh, there's going to be families who are going to be torn apart. For some Liberians in the northwest suburbs, the clock is ticking. March 31st is just days away. Definitely a crisis in the Liberian community. With no extension, they could be forced to leave the Twin Cities. So many people consider this place to be like home. So it would be so bad to see so many people that build a family and they got kids here yeah, to just leave their kid and just go back to a country where I can say they don't know. The battle to get a DED extension is personal. And if it doesn't happen, it could be painful. It's definitely going to harm a lot of people. So that's why I here to show some love, and that's why I here to, to call upon the Congress people to help the people right now. This has happened to my friend uh, Mark Square. His uh, mother, uh, Miss Vicki Peabody, was taken 
um, back to Liberia. If this extension is not granted, the repercussions will not be good because Liberia is still struggling. It's rough. There's not many jobs for people. It's, it's really tough. In St. Paul, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. Since 2007, there have been six DED extensions under former Presidents George Bush and Barack Obama. A Plymouth woman faces a murder charge after allegedly providing a fatal dose of heroin to a jail inmate while they were both in the Hennepin County Jail. 31-year-old Courtney Medcalf was charged in the death of a woman who was found unresponsive in her jail bunk in January. According to the criminal complaint, Metcalf was in jail for drug possession. A release from the county attorney Attorney's office says Medcalf admitted smuggling the heroin into the jail and giving some to the other inmate the morning she died. Work is planned this summer to make over a Plymouth Park that's located in a prime location, and that tops our look inside City Hall. East Medicine Lake Community Park covers more than 12 acres in the southeast corner of Medicine Lake, and earlier this year, the city approved plans for a major renovation of the park that includes a new and updated shelter. Last month, they got public feedback on what the playground should look like. Part of the play area will be 16 feet tall, which should provide a good place to view Medicine Lake. Work is expected to start in May, and the project should be mostly finished by September. This week, the Plymouth Council is also getting a first look at early plans for a 58-unit workforce housing development. It would be located on Highway 55, just west of County Road 73, in the Crossroads Commons development. The developer is asking for support for tax credits. This project would be similar to the Westview Estates Apartments that was built in the northwest part of Plymouth in 2012. Visitors from all over the country were on the campus of North Hennepin Community College to celebrate 10 years of Aikido instruction at the school. Aikido is a modern Japanese form of martial arts with its roots in jiu-jitsu. North Hennepin is the only college in the state to offer it for credit. It features hand-to-hand -hand combat that focuses on turning movements that redirect an opponent's attack or momentum. But participants can also use a sword or a staff. The instructor says it's a life tool that impacts relationships and strength of character. Learn some awareness, focus, um, confidence, self-esteem, those kinds of things. And, uh, you know, learn through not only studying it, but actually active learning, like, like doing the art and uh, participating in techniques. Right now, there are two classes with 20 students in each class. They hope to add another in the fall and are planning an evening class coming up this summer. Still ahead on CCX News, if you've ever watched a game show and thought you could do that, there is a local business to help you find out. Plus, it's a thrilling ending for Osseo in the consolation bracket of the State Boys Basketball Tournament. But first, a forecast that calls for less rain, but the clouds will stick around. We'll be right back. Plymouth may soon get a way to recognize the canine teams that have worked for the police department thanks to the efforts of a young Boy Scout. Samuel Lieberman is working on his Eagle Scout project. He's planning to build a memorial and recognition site honoring canines who have worked for the city. That includes raising more than $6,000 for a statue. It, the statue would look like this. It would be located right outside the police department and provide a place to be used for ceremonies. I've been interested in law enforcement for quite a while now and I especially like the canine unit and how much they do for the city and how much they work with the city. So I figured this would be a great recognition for those officers which are known as canines. Well, he's been fundraising and has raised about $2,200 so far for the project and he has a GoFundMe site called Lieberman Eagle Project. Well, ever dreamed of hearing your name called to come on down? Game show contestant wannabes no longer have to wait. In this week's Business Matters, there's a new Golden Valley business making a game show dream a reality. Game show nostalgia is whirling. Game Welcome to Game Show Battle Rooms, where the sweet taste of victory can be followed by the sting of defeat. Oh, what? 
people love it. They've come back to play our other arenas because uh, we have two arenas and they vary in games and styles. There are five games total, each one with a familiar spin on a classic, like Friendly Feud. Or there's Wheel of Phrases. I'm going with an E. <laughs> Groups can sign up for either 60 minutes or 90 minutes of game show glory. The appeal has been far reaching from grandparents to grandkids. We've had a couple like elderly homes come in. We've had high school ho hockey teams, football teams. Um, our market range is huge and anyone can play and anyone's able to do it. My parents actually gifted this to the entire family for Christmas and so we're just getting around to receiving that. Kenneth Latham and his family decided to make their game show run into a battle between the sexes to see how the chips would fall. Spoiler alert, the ladies lead never let up. And even those on the losing end felt like they had won. It was amazing, it fulfilled the dream of being on a game show. I mean, doesn't everybody want to do that? If anything, the trophy winning photo may fuel a rematch. And that's exactly the kind of competition this business loves to see. We want people to have fun and we want them to come back. Game show Battle Rooms is open seven days a week. The cost is $30 per person. Brings back some memories, doesn't it? <laughs> those, some of those old game those shows. Games, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coming up next, the annual spring event that brings out hundreds of people. Uh, but first, Brooklyn Center has a couple of close contests in the last two games at the State Boys Basketball Tournament. John Jacobson is in next. I'm John Jacobson with sports. Just one team from the area, Brooklyn Center, won its first game at the State Boys Basketball Tournament last week. The Centaurs beat Breckenridge in the Class 2A quarterfinals. That put second-seeded Brooklyn Center into the semifinals against third-seed Caledonia. Adrian Sprinkle sends it ahead to Kim Charles Douglas for the early layup, and it's a 5-2 BC lead. Sprinkles buries a three here, and it's 12-7 Centaurs as they start the game strong. Owen King, though, shows why he is a Mr. Basketball finalist. He pops a three for Caledonia, and they take the lead at 22-20. After the Warriors stretch the lead, the Lake Harut gets a breakaway layup. Brooklyn Center back within a point at halftime, 33-32. Second half, Douglas drives for two to tie the game at 45-all. He scores 14 points for the Centaurs. Caledonia, though, goes back up in front. Owen King driving, sets up. Martin Morin for two of his 25 points. Warriors lead by seven. Akai Patterson drives baseline for two of his 29 points. Not enough, though. The Centaurs fall 73-67. Brooklyn Center played another close one in the third place game, falling to St. Cloud Cathedral 75-70. Four Centaurs scored in double figures in the loss. Brooklyn Center finished with a 22-10 record. Osseo lost in the quarterfinals in Class 4A before beating Wyzetta in the consolation semifinals. That put them into the consolation championship game. Forest Lake awaiting the Orioles. Emmett Page opened for a three in the corner for the Orioles. He scores 18 points, but Osseo trails early. Nice ball rotation here, and Zach Tyson pops a three from the other corner, and Osseo ties it up at 12. Forest Lake's Cooper Berg. Shoots the three, Forrest Lake goes back in front by two. Here's a highlight reel play, Richard Moba to Tyson for the reverse layup. Osseo leads by five at halftime. Second half, Cornell Richardson drives baseline, finds Page in the corner for three. Osseo leads, balloons to 10 at 41-31. After Forrest Lake charges back to lead, Richardson sets up Eli Barlow for two of his nine points. Osseo up by one. Osseo leading by two of the last three minutes, but then a steal here for the layup. That ball with the basket, and it stays tied then through regulation. This is the end of the game, and overtime, Zach Tyson ends his career with a game-winning three-pointer. Orioles end the season on a high note. They win at 64-61. to 61. 
With the end of the winter sports season comes postseason awards for athletes. On this week's Sports Jam show here on CCX, Jay Wilcox and I name the top players on the Sports Jam all area boys and girls basketball and hockey teams. Here's part of what you'll see. Maple Grove Junior number 14 Trevor Kukinen is his team's offensive MVP. Possessed with great vision, the Michigan Tech commit had 17 goals and 21 assists this season. Leeson back for Hanley. Hanley scores. Go. Hopkins Park senior Kylie Hanley is an outstanding talent. The Minnesota Duluth signee finished the season with 33 goals to go along with 20 assists. He was an all-conference and all-state player for HP. Park Center senior number 21 Jarius Cook was the leading scorer from the Section 5-4A runner-up Pirates. One of the top shooters in the area, Cook averaged 15.3 points per game. The senior was named second team All-Metro and will play next year at North Dakota State University. Asia Wheeler helped Cooper to a state title in Class 3A. The junior, who was a great finisher in traffic, was Hawks team MVP and averaged a team high 14 points per game while leading the Hawks in steals. Wheeler made the all-tournament team at state. You can see all four of those teams in their entirety this week on Sports Jam. It airs through Wednesday at 3.30, 6.30, 30 p.m. here on CCX. That's all for sports. Alex and Mike, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, John. Up next, an early start to Easter celebration. A big bunny makes an early appearance when we come back. an early sign of spring and an appearance by the Easter Bunny and lots of people lined up at Robbinsdale City Hall. I got a tent, a tiger, and a blanket. It was another good turnout at the spring egg extravaganza at the uh, events on Saturday. Lines started forming two hours before and the event is sponsored by the Robbinsdale Chamber of Commerce. There were hundreds of prizes as kids opened Easter eggs with slips of paper inside telling them what they had won. The prizes ranged from teddy bears or in some cases bikes and scooters. It's a fun event for the city because it brings the community together and it's fun to see all the children of the community having such a wonderful time. Yes, she did. That little girl won a bike and check out the supply again of stuffed animals just waiting to be taken home. They go on and on and on. The Northwest Area JCs and the Robbinsdale Lions Club are among the groups that raised the money for the prizes and provided the volunteers at the event. You could say Great. good time was had by all. Yes, sure. good turnout. <laughs> That's it for now. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you back here again on Tuesday starting at 4 o'clock.